day. Come on, let's go. Why is it taking so long? Come on, let's go. Chop, chop, chop. I ain't got all day. I got a karate lesson I need to be at at four. Hey, don't screw around. You screw around too much. Hey, Tim. You're doing great work. Love what you're doing. Awesome stuff. Keep it up. Don't change a thing. All right, fellas. Let's boot her up. Let's see what she can do. Finally, Update 8 is now available on the Early Access branch. All right, real talk. So this update has been on the experimental branch for way too long. So the factory is built in Unreal Engine, and at the beginning of the year, we decided to update the engine version from Unreal Engine 4 to 5, because we saw a lot of potential to improve the foundation the game is built in. It's been a rocky journey, as a lot of things broke during the migration that we've had to patch up again. With the upgrade to Unreal Engine 5, we're able to take advantage of some of the new highly talked about features, such as Nanite and Lumen. Nanite is a virtualized geometry system to render high detail objects, which we're using for cliffs and rocks. We're also sort of unofficially supporting Lumen, which is the new global illumination and reflection system. I say unofficial support, as we haven't tuned the lighting for the game with Lumen in mind, and we're unsure if we ever will be able to do so. Lumen is a cool feature for you to enable and try out if you so choose, but beware that it might be quite taxing on your system and there might be some issues here and there. We're also taking advantage of a couple of other features that are new in Unreal Engine 5, such as the new input system, the new world partitioning system that should improve level streaming, and the new physics engine called Chaos. Since the old physics engine has been deprecated, we've had to completely rework our vehicles to use Chaos. There should be little to no changes when it comes to vehicle automation, but the manual driving of vehicles has been redone, and we've made improvements in feel and usage of the different vehicles. Most notably, driving on foundations now no longer causes vehicles to bounce around. We've also added support for multiple upscaling techniques, such as DLSS, XCSS, FSR, and TSR. All right, so with all that nerdy shit out of the way, let's check out some of the new stuff in Update. Let's start by talking about one of the new buildables in the game, the Priority Power Switch. So with the Priority Power Switch, you're able to organize sections of your power grid by having different priorities in the case of power failure. So if power should fail, the Priority Power Switches will turn off in order of their set priority, shutting down parts of your factory gated behind them, giving you more control over your power circuits. To deliver the power lines to your factory, we've added power towers. Oh. So power towers allow you to connect power lines or long distances. Power towers have two connection points. The top connection point is used to connect other power towers and has a longer length than regular power poles. And with the bottom connection point of power towers, you can connect it to regular power poles. There are two versions of power towers, one with a ladder and a platform and one without. One really nice new feature we've added is the ability to nudge holograms when building. When placing a hologram, it's now possible to lock down the placement of the hologram, so you can sort of move around and make sure it's correctly placed. And if you need to make adjustments, you can nudge around the hologram to where you want to place the buildable. 
Another neat little improvement to the build mechanics is that now you have a starting pole when placing conveyor belts and pipes, so you can get to building faster. When placing conveyor belts, previously there were also a couple of situations where the initial starting position was invalid in regards to pole heights. We've now moved the validity check of the final placement to the poles instead. So in update 7, we introduced blueprints. We're quite happy with the overall design of the blueprint system and the blueprint designer, but we felt we needed to make a few improvements. First of all, dismantling blueprints is quite tedious, as you have to dismantle pieces of the blueprints individually. It sucks to place down a blueprint with tons of build pieces only to realize it's not rotated correctly or not properly aligned. So we've added a blueprint dismantle mode that you can toggle on or off. With this, you can dismantle an entire blueprint all at once, significantly reducing the effort to get rid of blueprints that are misplaced or no longer useful. Not only that, but when you have this mode enabled and you highlight a blueprint, you can sample it similar to how you sample any building part. Speaking of dismantle mode, we've improved the dismantle filter to be more clear. When in dismantle mode, you can select and highlight certain types of buildables to be added to a filter, so you will only be able to select buildables listed in the filter for dismantling, making it much easier to dismantle specific parts of your factory. You can switch freely while dismantling, and it works both in blueprint mode and in regular mode. Ah, shit! Ah! Oh, God! Luckily, I'm wearing my parachute, and these suckers have been significantly improved in this update. Parachutes now count as an equipment instead of a consumable, so you only need to craft once and use it as many times as you want. We've also improved its maneuverability while in use. <sighs> All right. That's not the only equipment change we've made. Zip lines have improved as well. We increased the acceleration of zip lines in sprint mode, and the zip line now automatically connects to the next power line while zip lining on power towers and ceiling connections, and can be controlled when the power cable splits. We also finally added support for multiple fuel types for the jetpack, and each fuel type has different properties. Solid biofuel is the most basic fuel type that can be used before packaged fuel has been automated. It runs out fairly quickly, but works just as well. Packaged fuel is the regular fuel type we've used before, and it works just the same, but it's been given a tiny buff in upward momentum. Turbo fuel has faster acceleration and speed, allowing the player to reach much higher altitude, and it's also got slightly increased air control. And finally, you can now use liquid biofuel the best fuel type in the game, if you ask me. It works most of the same as regular package fuel, however, it burns much slower, making it possible to stay in the air way longer. <laughs> I'm here in the Titan Forest, and this biome has gotten a significant overhaul of its foliage, visuals, and sound effects. We left the notes alone, but there are a few minor terrain changes, but it shouldn't affect your existing factories too much. We also improved the vistas around the world to make it look more like you're on like one part of the planet instead of just being on an island in the middle of nowhere. The red jungle has also changed quite a bit, and we put some more work into finishing some of the caves around the map. In terms of lighting, we've done full passes over all the starting areas, as well as the Titan Forest, Red Jungle, and Spire Coast to elevate their look and feel further. Another really cool new feature we've added in this update is the ability to finally be able to blow up gas pillars in the game. Right. Check this shit out.
We've also polished and updated placement of creature spawns, hazards, and collectibles in many areas of the world. There's still some work to go before the map is fully complete, but, you know, we're getting there. Now, that's not all though. There's a really cool new secret area that I really want to show you guys. So if we just go over this way, we're going to be able to... Oh shit! Run away! I forgot we added these two new variants to the hogs, the cliff hog and the nuclear hog. They're the most menacing members of their family and they will defend their territory with devastating charge attacks. And if you try and fly away, they're gonna throw stuff at you and the nuclear hog is also radioactive. So that's a bummer. Well, guess that's it for me, huh? There's no way I'm getting out of this one. Oh wait, no, I can just do this thing. Sweet. You may have noticed that the menu has been updated. The creature hostility and arachnophobia mode have moved because there's a whole new subset of settings in town for the game under a category called advanced game settings that you can enable to be able to customize your gameplay experience. With the addition of advanced game settings, you can now remove build costs, unlock tiers, research or alt recipes, become invincible, fly, and completely remove arachnoid creatures from the game, just to name a few of these new settings. In order to access the advanced game settings, you need to enable this for your save file, as this isn't the original intended experience for the game. Many of these settings change restrictions that are part of sort of what makes satisfactory what it is, but the option is there for people to find other ways to enjoy the game. So yeah, those are some of the new things coming in Update 8. If you want to learn more about some of the features covered in this video, then make sure to check out the cards. As always, there's tons of bug fixes, optimizations, and quality of life features not covered in this video, so make sure to check out the full patch notes below.